Hello and welcome back to another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how you can paint the Dark Oath Chieftain from the Warhammer Quest Silver Tower box set. And as always I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. So here we have the Chieftain miniature and as you can see I've already glued it to the base and primed it using the Army Painters at Uniform Grey Spray Primer. Now I've gone for this primer as uh, there's a lot of light colours on this miniature including the skin and the cloth and things like that. Uh, now the first task in painting this miniature is to tackle the skin areas. Now as opposed to the Carrick Acolytes that I painted in a previous tutorial I want to have a much more uh, darker skin tone on this miniature. It looks like it's been tanned and has been out in the open for quite a while. So I'll be using uh, Bugman's Glow to paint all of the skin areas. So for this step it's just a matter of applying the Bugman's Glow over the entirety of the skin areas. Now the great thing about this paint is it's a base paint which means it should cover nicely over this grey primer. Now the reason why we're painting the skin first is because it's generally easier to paint from the inside out than it is to uh, paint the upper layers and then worry about accidentally overspilling when you're trying to get into all the nooks and crannies. Now in addition to painting all the skin areas, we're also going to be painting the inside of the loincloth, like this little section here, the little fold, and then you can just about see underneath as well, you can see the loincloth through there. So once the first step has been completed and the Bugman's Glow has been applied across all of the skin, we've got this nice even coverage as you can see here, the next step is to apply a glaze of Acadian Flesh Shadow. We'll be doing this by mixing in roughly equal quantities with Lamian Medium. So with your one-to-one -one mix of Lamia Medium and Cadium Flesh, then we want to apply this over all the skin areas apart from the inside folds of the, the loincloth there. So as you can see here, we're just going to be applying it over the leg. It doesn't matter if it uh, pulls into the recesses, we don't really mind at this, fate, at this step. But once this layer is dried, we're going to be applying a second using the same mix and just focusing mainly on the raised section. So once it's dry, we'll be just picking out the muscle definition and leaving this visible in the recesses. So now that the first all over application of the glaze is dry, we can now start picking out some of the raised sections. So for example on the bicep here, I'll be applying the same mix as before, the one to one lemon medium cadium flesh tone mix. However, I'll be leaving the, um, the darker mix visible in the recess and just picking out the lighter raised sections. This will just give us a really nice even skin tone. The next step in painting the skin of our Darkworth Chieftain is to highlight the very edges, just as around the facial features, the knuckles, things like that. And for this, we'll be using Kislev Flesh. So once again, I've mixed in a small amount of Lamia Medium, roughly two parts uh, Kislev Flesh to one part Lamia Medium, a little bit of a more paint-heavy mix this time. And the reason why I do this is because when you're painting these areas, especially skin areas, uh, you want the blending to be very subtle, you want it to be very gradual if you don't want to harsh lines as it doesn't really look very natural. So as you can see here I'm just picking out very gently with my thin brush here, just picking out the knuckles, just areas that are the top of the flesh, basically anywhere you want to really highlight. So there's going to be the knuckles and areas around the face as well and if you want to you can even uh, pick out some of the, the additional definition in the musculature as well. So the next step in painting our Dark Oath Chieftain is to uh, add a little bit more definition to the skin areas. Uh, concentrate a wash into the very re into the, the deep recesses in the skin and also paint these uh, folds of skin on the loincloth as well. We're painting these areas with Reichland Flesh Shade. So for the first part of this step I'll be uh, focusing this wash into the recesses of the skin. So for example just along the chest here, to be very carefully applying the wash directly into the gap. And just around these edges here, and you can see how it just applies a little bit more definition uh, into the muscle. And we'll just be picking out some of these areas here, just a little bit more depth into the skin. And we're doing this in any of the recesses. Now, when you come to paint the loincloth, you can paint that a little bit more quickly. You just apply a wash straight over the top, like so. So once the wash is dry, the next step is to highlight these skin areas here on the reverse of the loincloth with ongore flesh. So this time around, we're just going to be picking out the very edge of the cloth here, just with this uh, very quite a thin brush that I've got here. You can see the ungore flesh just being applied to the very edge, like so. So continuing with our method of working from the inside out, the next step is to paint the loincloth and any other uh, cloth that we've got across the miniature, including the, uh, the sword uh, handle there and also the wraps around the wrist and also the both sides of the loincloth. So for this we'll be using corn red. So as corn red is a base paint, you should have no problem applying it over the grey primer. And you can see it gives us a really nice deep red base in which to work from. With the corn red base coat completed, the next step is to wash over all of these red areas with a Karaberg Crimson. Now Karaberg Crimson is an excellent way to apply shading to red areas as it will apply shading in the recesses. You can see here it pulls and darkens, but it also maintains the really bright and vibrant red of the corn red you can see there. 
Now if you're feeling a little bit adventurous, you can even use this to pick out some of the scars across the miniature. So we've got one on the leg here. I'm just going to be very, very finely applying it around the edge, just picking out the outline like so. Once the wash is dry, the next step is to start applying some highlights. So we're applying a highlight to all of the red areas we painted in the previous step. And for this, we'll be using Evil Sun Scarlet. So using the Evil Sun Scarlet, I'm just going to be picking out the edges here. So around the loincloth here, I'm just going to be painting the, the fold of the cloth here. Very carefully dragging the line upwards. Like so, just creating a nice highlight as I go along. The next step in painting the red cloth areas is to apply a second extreme highlight of Fire Dragon Bright. So for this step, I'll be uh, focusing the highlights mainly on um, areas which are a lot more raised than the others. So for example, this little fold here on the loincloth, and then also these little tips that we've got here, the little rough edges. And then anywhere where we've got an upper edge. So for example, on the, the hand wraps here, I'll just be focusing on these top sections like so. With the red areas completed, the next step is to paint all the leather on the miniature. And this includes the sheath, uh, leather straps across the miniature, the boots, and also this uh, cloth that's just on the shoulder there as well, and also uh, the actual hair of the chieftain. And we're painting all of these areas with a bad and black. As a bad and black is a base paint, you should have no problem whatsoever covering over these areas quite easily. You can see here I've mixed just in a small amount of water just to improve the flow slightly, but it's still covering really nicely. I'm just going to make sure I cover across all these areas. And when I actually come to paint the leather straps and over the areas that we've already painted, you just want to be very, very careful there. Use a, a smaller brush if possible, and just be careful not to overspill. Once the base coat of the Abad and Black has been applied, the next step is to start highlighting the black areas. And for this, we'll be using Eschen Grey. This highlight is much the same as the previous one. I'm just going to be focusing this on the edges of the black areas. So I've got this little bit of cloth here. Just running the Eschen Grey along there. Now, Eschen Grey is a great... Uh, base highlight, uh, starting highlight for the black areas. It's quite dark and it doesn't contrast too strongly against the dark black base. The second step for highlighting the black areas is to uh, perform a second highlight using Dawnstone. Now, much the same way as we performed the second highlight on the red areas, we're just going to be focusing this on uh, the tips of the cloth here, just applying the lighter Dawnstone on the edges. And then also, uh, when we come to paint some of the upper areas, we're going to be painting those as well. So, for example, the straps. Focusing on this upper edge and gently dragging the Dawnstone across this top edge there. So with the highlights of the black areas completed, the next step is to paint all of the fur on the miniature. This includes uh, the fur on the shoulders there and also around uh, the boots as well. And we're painting these areas, first of all, with Skaven Blight Dinge. First of all, we'll just be painting the base coat onto these areas. As you can see here, I'm just applying the Skaven Blight Dinge across the fur areas like so, making sure that I a nice and even coverage that we can act as a base layer. The next step in painting the fur areas is to apply a highlight of Storm Vermin Fur. This time we'll just be picking out some of the individual strands of the fur, which you can just about see here, just uh, leaving the darker colour visible in the recesses and the gaps. Now in addition to painting the fur as well, we'll also be painting uh, the horn. Now we want to have the horn so it's darker towards the top of the actual horn, so we'll be painting the Storm Vermin Fur uh, roughly about halfway down as you can see I'm doing here. Now that the Storm Vermin fur highlight is completed, the next step is to wash over all of the fur areas, including the horn here, with Nuln Oil. The Nuln Oil wash that I'm applying here has the dual effect of not only darkening the fur, as you can see I'm doing here, but also pooling in the recesses. It really brings out the detail of the fur and all the individual strands there. So as you can see, I've uh, washed the fur there. So when I come to do the horn, I'm going to use similar action, but I want to uh, focus the wash really into these grooves in the horn and this will not only darken the recesses that it did do with the fur but also uh, blend in the two paints as you can see. Once the wash is dried the final step in painting the fur is to perform an extreme highlight on the very tips of the strands and also the the edge of the horn there and we'll be using administratum grey for this. So using the administratum grey I'm just going to be picking out the very tips of the fur here. It's very gently lightening up like so. And then when I actually come to paint the horn, like I said, I'm just going to be picking out these ridges along the edge of the horn, focusing mainly towards the bottom, but just applying a very small amount as we get towards the top as well. The next step in painting our chieftain here is to paint all of the skull and bone areas. So for example, we've got the shoulder pad here, all the, the various different skulls he's got scattered about his body. And we're painting all of these areas with Rakar flesh. 
When painting bone, I find Rakhar Flesh to be an excellent base paint in which to use. Not only is uh, it covers really nice, as you can see it's doing over this grey here, it also acts as a really nice kind of starting colour that you can build up from by applying different washes and also highlights as well. And you can see here, I'm just making sure that I cover the entirety of the skull for the time being. I'm just making sure that I avoid uh, painting over the areas I've already done, so such as the horn and also the fur as well. With the base coat of Rakhar Flesh applied, the next step is to wash over it with Seraphim Sepia. This Seraphim Sepia wash will not only warm up the colour of the bone, but it will also pick out some of the details you can see it's doing uh, here around the eye sockets on the skull and sh shoulder. I'll be applying the, uh, the wash over all the bone areas we painted in the previous step. The next step in painting the bone areas is to highlight them with Yushabti Bone. For this step it's just a case of picking out the raised sections of the skull and also any uh, other skulls dotted about the miniature there. Just picking them out with your shabti bone, just give it a little bit more definition and helps to enhance the detail in the miniature. The final step in painting the bone areas on this miniature is to pick out the beak of the skull on the shoulder here. Now we want to make it a slightly darker colour, so I'll be using a mix of Mornfang Brown and Lamium Medium. So I've mixed the Lamium Medium and Mornfang Brown into roughly equal quantities. And I'll be applying this just to the very tip of the beak, uh, similar to the way I applied the glaze of the flesh. You can see here it's very, very thin indeed. I'm just going to focus on the tip here and spread it upwards towards the rest of the skull and just create a, a nice difference in tone where the beak is. Now before we move on to painting the metallic areas of the miniature, the one more area we need to paint and that is the gem. So this includes uh, the items on the scabbard here. We've also got um, a few various items such as the ring there as well. We're painting all of these gems on the miniature, first of all with Warpstone Glow. When painting these areas, I would highly recommend using a uh, fine brush, uh, just as some of the gems are actually quite small. But for the time being, we just want to cover the entirety of the gem. Just getting a nice warpstone glow base colour on there. The next step in painting the gems is to apply a small uh, reflective line at the bottom of the gems, and for this we'll be using Moot Green. Once again, using a fine brush, just going to be drawing a very small line along the bottom edge of these gems, you just about to see I'm doing here, and this just creates a nice reflective glow, as if light is hitting the gem on its glossy surface. With the moot green line painted, the next step is to blend in the two colours, the uh, the warpstone glow and a moot green, by applying a wash of Aquilia Green Shade. For this step you just want to apply a small amount of the wash over the gems, and this will have the dual effect of not only applying shading around the edge of the jewel itself, it'll also darken the center and blend in the two um, layers that we painted in the previous step, and just create a much more realistic looking glow. The final step before moving on to the metallic areas is to apply a small dot of white onto each of the gems using Ceramite White. Here you can see on my paintbrush I've got a very small dot of Ceramite White on the tip there, and I'm just going to be using this to apply a small dot of white paint just in the top left corner as you look at it. And this just creates um, a kind of like a bright reflective glow as you can see I'm just doing here. And this just finishes off the gem effect. So now that we've completed all the non-metallic areas, we can start painting the gold and also the steel on the miniature. And the first step is to paint all of these gold areas. So there's quite a few of them. So we've got the uh, the actual the hilt, the sheath, uh, both the weapons here. Uh, we've also got a lot of the adornments around the belt there as well. I'm painting all of these areas with a Balthazar gold. When applying this paint, you want to be extremely careful not to overspill onto the non-metallic areas as it can be quite difficult to uh, paint over them again. So just use a small brush and just take your time. There's no need to rush these steps. I'm just going to be painting over a base coat to all of these gold areas. The next step in painting the metal areas on this miniature is to paint the shoulder here, the, uh, the shaft of the axe, and also um, this piece of armor around the wrist there as well. So we're painting all of these areas with Warplock Bronze. As before, it's just a matter of applying the bronze over the armor. This gives us a really nice kind of bronze metallic look. You see, I'm just being careful not to overspill onto the string and the tooth that are just wrapped around here. Just being careful not to spill onto the fur either. Once the brass areas have been completed, the next step is to wash over both the gold uh, areas we painted in the previous step and the um, the brass areas as well with Agrax Earthshade. For this step, I'm going to be quite liberally applying the wash over the metal areas. You can see here it's pulling into all the recesses and just picking out all of the details there. I'll be doing this across both the uh, the golder metallic areas and also the brass areas we painted in the last step as well. The next step in painting this miniature is to highlight the bronze areas with Sycorax Bronze. So when highlighting this shoulder panel, you can see all the beaten um, dents and things that are in it. You're just going to pick those out with Sycorax Bronze just and emphasize them 
like so and just pick out the highlights along the edge just by dragging the brush along the edges of this armor here. The next step in painting our chieftain is to paint the blade of the sword, uh, the axe head, and also um, any additional items such as these buckles on the miniature. We're painting all of these areas, first of all, with lead belcher. As lead belcher is a base paint, you should have no problem whatsoever in covering over these uh, grey primary areas. I'm just going to be applying quite a thin coat. I've mixed in a small amount of water here just to improve the flow slightly so it doesn't pool um, too thickly on the miniature. I'll just be applying this across all of the areas that we want to paint silver. The next step in painting the metallic areas is to wash over all of the silver areas with non-oil. At the moment the lead belcher isn't quite dark enough for how I want it to be so I'm just applying this uh, non-oil wash over the entirety of the surface. It will darken it somewhat and also pull into the recesses slightly, especially around where the hilt is. And as you can see here, it's actually pulled in the center of the blade and leaving the edge a little bit brighter. I'll be doing this on both sides, like so. And we'll be applying this wash everywhere across the miniature where we've got silver metal. Once the wash is dry, the next step is to perform a uh, layer over the top of the metal areas. This includes both the axe and also the sword as well. And for this, we'll be using Iron Breaker. Now the way I'll be applying this iron break is entirely optional, you can just apply it along the edges if you want to, but I'm going to be applying uh, some gradients along the blade, similar to that as can be seen in the uh, the studio version of the Dark Earth Chieftain. So I'm going to split this sword into several sections. So first section, I'm going to be applying a gradient going down roughly about halfway like so. And then once I've finished applying that one, I'm going to move down to the next section, start there roughly and then apply the gradient going down again. And I'll be building this up over a couple of layers just to en enhance the brightness. And then for the opposite side of the blade, I'll actually be doing the opposite. So instead of going from top down, I'll be going from bottom to the top like so, just applying the gradient along the top of the blade. So as you can see, we've now completed the Iron Breaker gradient on the weaponry. You can see here on the blade, it goes into two different directions and roughly goes about now halfway down the blade before getting darker. Now the next step is to highlight all of the gold and also silver areas on the, along the edges using Runefang Steel. When highlighting the sword, I'm going to be drawing, dragging it along these slight ridges that we've got here, making a very small bright line along each of these and also along the, the center ridge that goes down the blade as well. And here we have the completed miniature, who you can see I've also painted the base for. If you enjoyed this tutorial, do let me know in the comments below and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. You can also choose which miniature from Silver Tower you would like to see me tackle next by clicking on the small eye in the top right corner of the video and choosing your favorite. If you would like to be kept up to date with all the projects I'm working on, you can head over to my Instagram and Facebook pages, which you can find links to in the description below. Additionally, if you would like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon page, which you can find a link to on the screen now. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.